Hi everyone, are you curious about what to expect in your PhD interview process? Well, today I want to share with you my experiences of going through a PhD interview process in several schools in the US and Canada and share some tips on what I learned along the way. Let's dive in. Hi, my name is Dr. Banda Khalifa. I'm a PhD student at the Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health. I was also an MPH MBA SOMA scholar at the Bloomberg School. On this channel, I share strategies to help empower prospective applicants and graduate students to break the academic and personal developmental barriers. If you are new, welcome to the family. Kindly subscribe, like, and share so that others can benefit. Let's dive in. Hi, it is important to remember that every PhD program and its interview process will be different. But there are few common threads that you can expect to see in every single interview. My first PhD journey started when I was in my second year of my MPH and MBA program at Hopkins. Out of about eight schools I applied to, I got accepted into only two programs with no source of funding. So I had to abandon that hope and then start a new journey in the following application cycle. Let me know if you want me to share a detailed story of what I learned during my very first application cycle and what I did right in my second application cycle to enhance my chances of getting admitted into several schools in the US and Canada with full funding. Fast forward to 2020, I was extremely excited when I received multiple interview invitations from several prestigious schools, including Johns Hopkins University, University of Michigan, University of Maryland, and in Canada, University of Toronto, and uh, McGill University. But it is worth noting that a couple of schools offered me admission without even interviewing me. But the ideal situation is that most prestigious schools will still require you to interview because of the limited slots and the highly competitive nature of their process of admission. So before I even received my first request to interview, I started researching on the schools that I applied to. I looked into their programs, uh, spoke to a couple of current students, and even spoke to alumni. I started practicing common interview questions that I found online, and those questions were extremely, extremely important in helping me alleviate the stress of the interview process. So my first interview experience was with University of Maryland PhD in Pharmaceutical Health Services Research. I mean, this program is one of the most competitive programs in the pharmaceutical space or in pharmacoepidemiology. The interview process is a multi-step process. So the initial screen is usually with the faculty that determines whether you're fit for the program. Then, once you pass that initial stage, they send you an email congratulating you and inviting you to the next phase of the competition or the next phase of the interview. So the second round of the interview process is more like a seminar with all the applicants, all the faculties, um, all the advisors that you mentioned in your, in your SOP. So what you're going to do is that you're going to listen to a series of lectures following which I, I interviewed with two uh, professors or faculty members from the school. My next interview was University of Michigan. Man, this was also a, a packed interview. It was the whole day. It was one of the most daunting interviews. It was a whole day program and I was told to block my calendar for the entire day. On the interview day, all the applicants were on the Zoom call. There was a series of presentations, followed by interviews with two different faculty members. Those faculty members were the ones that I have researched about and had included them in my statement of purpose. My next interview was the Johns Hopkins University, right? So honestly, this was one of the most relaxing of the interviews. I showed up well prepared and dressed. I felt more comfortable answering the questions. The interview itself lasted about 30 minutes and I interviewed with only one faculty. 
but that was not the case when I first applied. My first application, I interviewed with two faculty members. So that was the change. My last interview was University of Toronto. Um, so I applied to two schools in Canada. One offered me admission without interview, uh, but University of Toronto invited me for an interview. The interview with the University of Toronto was with two faculty members and a student representative. And they, uh, at, around, at around that time, the questions were almost similar to all the schools. So that you can see that there's a pattern of questions that most of the schools will ask you in a varied way or form. Let's talk about my reflections, right? So uh, I would say that on the interview day, typically you'll be nervous. It's expected. I was nervous, but I was also confident in my abilities and my fit for the programs. I showed up well dressed and well prepared with copies of my transcript, CV, SOP, and even my capstone uh, paper. During the interview process, I was asked various questions about my research interests, my previous experiences, my future career goals. I did my best to articulate my thoughts clearly and concisely and to show my enthusiasm for the program uh, and that particular institution. We'll do another video to review all the PhD interview questions I have compiled from colleagues in other pre prestigious institutions. So in the end, I received offers from several schools, including my top-ranked school, Johns Hopkins University. Um, looking back, I've learned so many lessons in that interview process. And, you know, even before other schools made their decision, I'd already accepted uh, the offer from Johns Hopkins. So I sent an email to all the other programs that I've, I've gotten a school and I'm not interested in ex exploring any other school. So if they have, like, they are thinking of giving me a slot, they should, uh, you know, give it to someone else. And I think that is a pretty good thing to do if you've received multiple of This is a short video to, uh, to tell you about my experiences. I hope my experience can provide some insights and inspiration for others considering applying to PhD programs or going through a similar interview process. If you have questions or want to share your experiences, please leave a comment in the comment section below. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.